Oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. The title of the message today is Stop. Expect God to fix things. It's inspired by the reading of a devotional that we received when I was in clinical pastoral education at the hospital at Bay State and also inspired by the Psalm 46 10 be still and know that I am God and I just want to go and pray with you initially as we always do Heavenly Father we thank you for another time of worship a time of devotion a time to center our hearts our mind, will, and emotions to you, to surrender all that to you. And I thank you, Lord God. You said, those who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. And I pray that over all those who are listening under my voice, that those who are heavy laden, that God will give you rest. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human knowledge and understanding, shall guard and keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, through the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. Now this uh, passage is written by Edwina Gately, and it titles, Let Your God Love You, before we get to the amplified title of Stop, Expect God to Fix Things. So it all comes together. It reads, let your God love you. Be still. Be silent. Alone. Empty. Before your God. Say nothing. Ask nothing be silent be still let your God look upon you that is all God knows God understands God loves you with enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet, still, be. Let your God love you. Isn't that awesome? It's hard to do in life to be still when we got so much to do, so many tasks to complete. But God is asking us to be still and know that He loves you, that He hears. He understands and to receive from him his enormous love and that's what was iterated in the poem in Psalm 46 it expects it says stop to trust God that's what the, it amplifies trust even though it doesn't articulate the word trust in the psalm but it derives the theological meaning of trust, of what it is to trust God. So it iterates to the readers and to those audience, which the psalm is sung by the soprano voices of women, is to stop and to expect God to fix things. Trust God to do that. Psalm 46 reads, 
God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it continues on verse two. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Psalm 46, three reads, let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And then our famous verse that all Christian readers know verbatim is Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am be still and know. Be still. Be. Now articulates to be still in God's presence. So stop. Know that I am. In Hebrew it means I will be what I will be. That's what God's name means, and I am. I will be who I will be. And then it goes in 10. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is among us. The God of Israel is our fortress, even the nation of Israel still must find hope in God. There's no super power as John Golden Game mentions about the, to have a nation often refers to great imperial superpower. Even, even if that has high hopes, must come into subjection of God of heaven's armies because God's presence his his deliverance brings everything to fruition and it reads in Golden Gate he mentions in the theological background Yahweh's armies is with us suggests God's being with people not merely as a presence but also active in bringing deliverance. And in conclusion and theological implication, he writes, violence that such as natural disasters or thus that being a political chaos or that being military wars is a prominent fact of human life and one we cannot evade. Prayer is not designed to make it possible for us to escape from violence into peace. 
even though that we want to be alone when there's turmoil all around us sometimes you cannot evacuate the turmoil in your life you have to stand up against it and that's what the scripture says be still and know that I am God and as you you continually to fortify your faith God will give you enough strength to stand against it and that he will not put too much on you where you cannot bear but give you a way of escape and Praying in the midst of violence, he suggests, is our desperately needed corrective to the widespread of malpractice of prayer as withdrawal, to not do anything. And it's calling us in the midst of all what's going on in our world. It's to rekindle our prayer life and to get into our prayer closets and to do battle and to do warfare, whether it's literally or metaphorically or mythologically sometimes people don't believe in there's a spiritual warfare some people don't know that um they have a, a a physical need to pray to combat the powers that be that are causing turmoil in their world to come in harmony with the cosmos and with god and praying in this kind of perspective will allow us to relinquish our trust in ourselves and trust God to stop and expect God to fix things. But it reads in um, Golden Gate, he goes on, he said, but neither do we confront violence either. Rather, it is dealt with indirectly. It is absorbed into the forms and ceremonies of prayer. Indeed, the subject of the psalm is not violence, but God, which is in Psalm 46. It's not mentioned about violence, but to demonstrate God's awe-inspiring deeds, the actions of God. It says, be still and know that I am God it is a common invitation in Christian spirituality. This involves a reinterpretation of the psalm. Nowhere do the psalms have an ideal of silence. Their assumption is that one finds God not in silence but in noise, like they mention in the illustration of Psalm 46 and thunder and the sea and the rage. All this stuff is to pay attention and even our adopted evangelical Christian concepts we see some things are happening. Sometimes people say global warming or destruction over there to Japan or to some tsunamis, etc. And, and we blame circumstance and all. We blame their practices on their natural destruction. But it's not always necessary. It's not always true. That's why we have to go and get a reflection of God's lens to give us a new way of renewal theology of how we're interpreting the cosmos, how we're interpreting the earth, how we're interpreting God's divine will on human life. And as he mentions, this involves reinterpretation of the psalm and says their assumption was one finds God not in silence but in noise. And oftentimes we see this in um, cultural, when it's thunder and lightning, everybody says, shut the TV off, shut the lights off, God is speaking. It's just the way of natural things that's going to happen. It's going to thunder and lightning. It's, the seasons are going to change. But some, what do you call it, wise fables out there, myths, that who, people who believe in that, will go ahead and, what do you call it, be superstitious of thinking that's what's going on. But God does not need to do that. He's all powerful himself. He doesn't need to speak to you through a thunder or electrocute you to, to have a conversation with you. And even as Elijah, when he was famished, he was running, God spoke to him in a still, small voice. Even in silence, as he generated, Golden Gates mentioned that, our Western society doesn't like to be in silence too much. 
but we find our needed reflection of contemplation of our healing of 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 great impact which is needed to do we can't as human beings do the groundwork in other human lives because only they know what they've gone through as a chaplain i can't uncover anything that you are not mentioning to me to bring hope for you to find healing and your experiences if you don't uncover those so that's something that that individual or that patient or that uh, member has to find in in and to desire for it to come up and expect god to fix it not that human beings can fix it but when god brings people in communities they can help bring healing to see god's hand upon their lives and that's when we as a people of god become christ's hands his feet his his mouthpiece to do the work of ministry okay as we continue what golden gate mentions in noisy western cultures we may need to cultivate silence and the use of the psalm to this end may be inspired by the holy spirit even though it does make the words mean something the psalmist did not say and would not have dreamed of saying spirit inspired interpretation often works by making the words of scripture mean something quite different from what they actually meant because new situations make it necessary for god to say new things at the same time we have to be wary of missing what the text actually did say here is the issue an important challenge to the superpower to stand still and recognize that God is God and that the superpower is not Golden Gate continues to mention and contrast to a concurrently popular view but in keeping with the last book of the New Testament Yahweh reckons that violence can stop violence However, Martin Kobel suggests that it is the declaration of Psalm 46 to be still and know that God is God that shows us the way to integrate the idea and integrate that God is warrior into theological conceptions about God. Further, the challenge to stop also issues an important challenge to the people of God to give up thinking that it has a responsibility for its destiny. As we mentioned earlier, to stop, expect God to fix things. Don't always interpret things in your own way of thinking. And that is a task it's to bring in the kingdom of God. Or some Christians believe that they have to bring the kingdom of God here on earth or further the kingdom of God. Scripture does not think in such terms. The psalm makes clear that the city of God is not mere heavenly community. As Augustine mentions, the city of God might seem to imply, but an earthly reality. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in God's Holy Spirit. And this city, beloved, it is not for us to fix things. It is for us to expect God to fix things. And will you be still and know that God is God? As we stop and acknowledge who God is, for he will be highly exalted above the nation, and he will be exalted above the earth. He does break down our norms, our cultural clashes, our um, superpowers, and he is a jealous God. At the same token, he's jealous for you because he loves you so much. And we have to take all the characteristics and the attributes of God and, and take it for what it is. He makes alive. He creates. And he also makes people when they go into pass. But a lot of people say we trust God's timing on our lives when we shall go and be with the Lord. And some people have that reverence for the Lord who can understand and who have that faith. And some people don't have that faith to trust God when their time is up. But I pray that God will continue to give you peace 
that surpasses all human knowledge and understanding that shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. As we read about stop and love and take the love of God for your own, as one had mentioned, and she wanted you to be still, and she just interpreted Psalm 46 in a different way than Psalm 46, but we were still yet inspired to read it. And we'll go ahead and close with Edwina Gately, as we had mentioned in the beginning. Let your God love you. Be silent. Be still. Alone. Empty. Before your God. Say nothing. Ask nothing. Be silent. Be still. Let your God look upon you. That is all. God knows. God understands. God loves you with enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet, still, be. Let your God love you. Amen and amen. To God be all the glory. Will you be still? And let God love you with his enormous love. Be still. Stop. And expect God to fix the chaos, the confusion. The superpowers. Let him bring that all to fruition. Be still and know that God is God. Amen and amen.